Yo everyone, what's going on? Curryway here, and in this video, I decided in the spirit of the holidays to speedrun the seed, Christmas. Wait, no, hold on. Christmas. If you like this kind of video where I speedrun specific cool seeds, let me know with a like on this video, and feel free to comment any suggestions you may have for any future seeds or video ideas down below. Also, chances are that if you're watching this video, you may not be subscribed, so if you like this video and are interested in more from me in the future, make sure to hit that subscribe button. On the day I'm recording this, we just hit 20,000 subscribers, which is absolutely mind-blowing to me. Thank you all so much for the support recently. It truly means more than you know. And with that all out of the way, let's get into the video. All right, here we go. This is the Christmas seed that I ended up going with. This is really similar to a video that I did recently where I speed ran my Minecraft username as a seed. Um, I'll leave a link to that in the description down below and also in the top right. And basically what I did is I originally put in Christmas as the seed and decided to play around with the capitalization because the capitalization matters when you put in a seed and kind of just experimented with what seed I think would be cool for a video, which one kind of is Christmassy in some type of way. And speaking of Christmassy, you could see my skin as I open up my inventory, decided to put on a nice little Santa outfit uh, for this video, because why not? Felt a little bit festive. Um, but yeah, I wanted to see that it was somewhat Christmassy in some way. And you could see in the thumbnail that we end up uh, traveling to a snow biome, which is really nice. It's something that I wanted to at least try and do in this video. So I was happy that that ended up working out. Um, right now, you can see that I'm mining a bunch of cobble and iron. And this is going to be to guarantee myself that iron pick that we talk about a lot so that when I go to a bastion, I'm able to just mine all the gold, which is going to be really nice. And then I'm also going to make an axe and a hoe here and actually skip out on the shovel. And you'll see why in a second. Um, but I don't really need a shovel at the moment. So I'm just going to utilize the axe and the hoe for everything that I need. I'm able to get my wood right here. Uh, this is actually something that I recommend people do. Instead of cutting down trees, if you're doing a village, especially obviously a plains village, I think this is really where this comes in. Um, just mine the gold here, because or not the gold, excuse me, mine the wood here, um, because that allows you to mine just a lot consistently and you don't have to like take a break and go to another tree or something. Uh, you're able to just mine in a row, which saves some time. And then there's the golem right here. Um, so the reason why I grabbed four iron in that cave and not all of it is that's because the golem has a chance to drop three to five iron. So even if it drops the least amount, which it actually does here, it drops three. I'm still going to be able to make an iron pickaxe for three iron, an iron bucket for three iron, and a flint and steel with the remaining piece of iron. And that is everything I need. I, I feel comfortable to go without a shield for these type of runs. So I didn't need that. If you're not feeling comfortable, I always recommend getting five. Um, I used to do that a lot, and I think it's super good because shields are super, super valuable in these type of things. And the other thing about this village that's kind of interesting is I'm only going to grab two beds. And then luckily, since I know that I'm going to a bastion, uh, I don't really need to worry about beds because I'll be able to get some string there and make some beds with the wool that I'll be able to make from the string. So, yeah. And then we have a ruined portal right here, which is really nice. This is actually why I ended up not making a shovel. I'm able to grab this gold block here. And then in this chest, I get three obsidian and a piece of flint and steel, which is really nice. And now I have a gold shovel, which is awesome. I didn't need to get a shovel for the gravel since I had a piece of flint in there. And now I'm able to make my portal top into the nether around the three minute mark, which is really good for one of these runs. Um, I actually believe this is the fastest run that I did besides the 10 minute one. The seed was actually really good. Um, and I guess I could talk about it now as we're entering the nether. Um, so this nether is actually pretty cool see me turn around right away and do a cool little block clutch jump um, and then we're on our way down this little hill placing blocks to make sure that I don't take any fall damage and then we're going to place our crafting table down here make a boat and also make a helmet so that when we go into the bastion we don't have to worry about taking any damage from the piglins um, some people ask sometimes why you might want to make a helmet over boots um, I, I made a helmet here because for two reasons one i had enough gold i didn't have to mine gold in the nether for it i'm entering with over five gold so it's just super easy for me to make a helmet it's not going to take any more time i just noticed that piglin fall on the right if you guys saw that i didn't see that in the when i was actually recording this that's pretty funny um but yeah it didn't take any more time to to grab any more gold so i thought i might as well just make the helmet and the other reason is when you do that you can piglins have a chance of dropping iron boots right with soul speed on it so you still have the gold effect then uh for piglins not to hit you and then you're also able to get soul speed iron boots which is really good so in a situation like this it just makes sense to make a helmet um again it, it kind of varies and it also depends on you know what you're comfortable with 
and things like that. So I'm going to throw some gold on the ground to distract this piglin while I mine some blocks. And these blocks are going to allow me to do my favorite bastion strat with bridge. Um, this is bridge, by the way. You could probably tell by the snout. And we're going to go mine some blocks and get some piglin to come down and join the party. There's also a hoglin, which I'm able to avoid. And actually, these piglin were not really cooperating here. There were only like two. Yeah, you can see there's like absolutely no piglin here. But the saving grace is that the trades actually end up being pretty good here. And I'm also able to get an insane amount of piglins from uh, when I break the gold block in just a second. I'm also able to get pearls right there, which is super nice. Throw some gold into the sky. I actually get another pearl trade there, which is really, really good. Um, so that was really nice. And then building up here, there were also zombie piglins. That was not helping my situation at all. Um, but that was okay. It wasn't too big of a deal. I'm able to put the gold in my inventory, break the gold block, and get all my friends to come to the center here. I only got three. I thought I got more. I guess more came from the bottom. So now I got six piglin trading down there, which is a pretty good number. I think as long as you have, um, like six, you're pretty good. Um, this guy also just came down out of nowhere. He just fell. I think six is kind of like the bare minimum that you want when you're trading in a a bastion and then i'm just organizing my inventory because i know i need some string i know i need some pearls and i have all my obsidian already which is really nice um and if you have seen any of my recent videos where i've talked about uh missing obsidian or crying obsidian for my portal that thankfully i don't make the same mistake this time uh i'm gonna craft some wool i think i'm missing yeah i'm missing just one more string trade that's all i'm waiting for here all i need is one i actually get it which is really nice and then I get another pearl trade, which I actually didn't need, but just nice for safety. And I'm leaving this bastion around the six minute mark. So this was actually a really fast bastion. This is like a two minute bastion, um, which is what you want to aim for. And now we get some really cool pearl throws again. Um, I actually really like this first pearl throw that I do. This was the pearl throw that was hardest. I, keep, I kept missing. I kept hitting my head on the ceiling. It's a pretty precise, precise throw through that gap. But once I did it a couple times, I was able to start nailing it down. There's a lot of cool, other cool pearl throws too that we'll see. But we are actually on our way to the fortress. We have two more pearl throws, one up here, and we're going to avoid the lava just narrowly. And then we have one more to get directly into the fortress. Which is nice. And then we can hop down here and be on our way to the blaze spawner. Now, something that I learned that you may have seen in my uh, SSG speedrun is, oh, also there was a blaze here. This was the first time this happened. I was very confused on like what was happening. I was like, oh, wait, blazes can actually spawn not at a spawner. I forgot about that. Um, we talked about doing this in my set seed speedrun. These are actually called head hitters, I learned, and it's really good for moving fast and they're super fun to do. So I did this a lot with the blocks that I had to go a little bit faster here. And yeah, I wish I had more gravel from trading because I would have been able to do it more. So I, I really like doing it. I highly recommend doing it in a fortress. I have my one fire res that I throw on my base and we're good to go. So killing blazes now. I actually go one for three, one for four so far on blaze rod drop. So not too great, but we're at the spawner at a pretty good time. I think my blaze rod drops ended up, ended up being like average-ish. I think the spawn rate was just really good. Yeah, like I'm one for five right now. My blaze rod drops were not good, but they just kept spawning. So I certainly wasn't complaining and yeah, we're going to do a couple cool pearl throws from here. Originally, when I did the blind travel, I, I thought about it like right here. This is actually like pretty good coordinates for it. But unfortunately, it was like a 2000 block random travel and it just it did not work. So I messed around with it, did my nice calculations. And also, this is probably a good time to mention that I'll be leaving the routing that I did as an unlisted video in the description. So if you're interested in kind of my thought process for this, I'm going to upload a video um, and it'll be in the description. It's not going to be like a public video, just unlisted for people who are interested on kind of my process routing this run and thinking about, you know, a lot of different things like how many pearls I need to throw, um, where I'm going to build the portal, how fast do I think it's going to take for me to get into the nether, things like that, right? Do I go to the fortress first? Do I go to the bastion first? And a lot of those things are really important to think of, not only in uh, a run like this where I already kind of know what I'm doing, but in set in random seed runs too it's really big like there's a lot of times where obviously normally you want to go to the bastion first but sometimes you know you still want to hit the fortress first because it's just that much closer so in a run like this i almost thought about it because of how close the the fortress was to my spawn but in the end i decided bastion was faster and it'll give me a better place to pearl out of too for uh blind travel so here's my first pearl throw as i'm getting bombarded by a skeleton 
and then we're gonna throw a second one through that gap, which is a really cool throw. Then do some nifty parkour over the soul sand, which is really nice. And yeah, hopefully we don't get hit by Hoglin. I actually died here <laughs> one time from, not from a Hoglin, but from two skeletons shooting at me. It was not a, not a fun time, but that's okay. Missed my jump here, but that happens sometimes. And then this is my favorite pearl throw. Look at that. That is a, that is a throw and a half. And then we are going to build our nether portal. And this is again, like I said, this is a super fast run. We're building our nether portal under 10 minutes, which if this was a real run would be absolutely insane. And yeah, build the portal, light it up and through we go. So this is where you see the thumbnail, our portal in the snow biome, which I was really happy about for Christmas um, or just the holiday season in general. If you don't celebrate Christmas, I hope regardless that you have a nice winter break or anything like that. I hope that you are having a nice time with you know everything going on. So, and like I said before, like the support has been absolutely unreal. So I really do appreciate that. And yeah, thank you. Thank you all so much. The videos have been really awesome to make and that's all thanks to you guys. So throwing my last eye here for triangulation, it breaks, but that's okay. And then I throw a pearl over this river to get to where I need to go. I actually get stuck in this tree, but it doesn't end up mattering. I always like when that happens, when you get kind of squished in a tree, I always find that pretty funny. And then we're gonna dig down here at 4-4. Um, I had a lot of comments actually with people thinking that I missed 4-4 in like a previous video. 4-4 is just like the term for digging down at like around 4-4. So like 3-5 is fine. Even like anything between like seven and two is like honestly fine because you'll see the uh, starting staircase, which is what you want to kind of hit into. I actually go the wrong way here too. Um, this was actually the first time that I got in the stronghold, but I can I uploaded this run because I thought everything else was so clean. And this was the first time I gotten into the stronghold after like an hour and a half, two hours of attempts doing this. And I was like, wait, this is not the correct way to go. So I hopped back out and I'm like, where the heck, where did I mess this up? And everywhere I punched, I hit a silverfish block, which was not good. Don't randomly punch in a stronghold. That is absolutely the last thing you want to do and get caught with some silverfish. But I was able to escape very nicely, hop in here, place my block, and through to the end we go at the 1130 mark, which again, absolutely insane. Then we're able to pearl over. I throw one more pearl because, hey, why not? I got the pearls to do it. And we're going to make our nice little obsidian one cycle system. This time I did not forget my obsidian. I learned. I learned. I, I told you guys I would not do it again. And I did. I promise. I did not do it again. Um, so now we're going to sit here. I actually do something a bit different this time, which I think I'm going to start to do in my future runs, um, even in like actual legit runs too when I have the blocks, is pearl over and... It gives you a lot of height really fast when I don't have as many blocks. And then I was able to just bridge over. I decided not to speed bridge just to play it super safe. And now I'm just chilling, waiting for the dragon to perch, as you do in the end. And I think this dragon actually cooperated, which was quite nice. We've been on a, a streak of the dragon not cooperating. Actually, right here, I thought for a second it was going to perch the a different direction. And I was like, no way. There's no way it perches a different direction. And then I also almost missed the perch. I didn't notice it. I thought it was it and then I got in and yeah here is the one cycle enjoy boom there it is I hope you all enjoyed this video again happy holidays Merry Christmas if you don't or I did that backwards Merry Christmas happy holidays if you don't celebrate Christmas and again thank you all so much the best Christmas present I have ever gotten is hitting 20,000 subscribers. I don't know how many will be out by the time this video goes out. But again, truly, truly appreciate the support recently. Been absolutely unreal. I hope to start streaming soon. I don't want to put a date out there because I'm honestly not too sure, but hopefully soon. And yeah, that's all I have to say. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you all again soon with another video. Peace out, everyone.